Are you one of the hundreds or thousands of people that are new to MLB The Show, interested in getting into Diamond Dynasty, but feel super overwhelmed by everything that's going on? This video's for the rookies, the newbies, or maybe some offline people that are interested in getting in Diamond Dynasty, and you need a Diamond Dynasty for dummies breakdown. Diamond Dynasty is MLB The Show's version of Ultimate Team that you see in FIFA, Madden, and NHL. You work both online and offline to build up your inventory of both legends and the current MLB players to build the ultimate binder and build the greatest baseball team you possibly can. You can have an outfield like Larry Walker, Ken Griffey Jr. and Bryce Harper. Throwback specific cards like George Springer's 2017 postseason. Tomorrow. And Springer atones for the ball in center! Or projected future star cards for some of the top ranked prospects in the game. We have a variety of ways to play both online and offline to unlock stuff. I'm gonna slide over to the collect tab here. The most important thing to note is the XP reward path. This in essence is the way your account levels up. This is your battle pass for MLB The Show. Every single thing you do, whether online, offline, does not matter. Everything you do, you will gain XP and level up your XP reward path. The more you unlock, the farther you go, and along the way, you're gonna get some stud diamonds through this XP reward path. And once you get all the way to the end and you've completed it, you will then unlock what's called the Prestige XP reward path, which is where I am right now, level 82, on the XP reward path. I've been playing this game for 11 months and I still have not finished the prestige XP reward path, even as a content creator. They give you some incredible stuff and they keep you occupied. <laughs> rank seasons is your competitive nine inning ranked mode where the more you win, the higher you level up, the stiffer the competition gets. But again, the more rewards you will get as you level through in ranked seasons. And the purpose is to get all the way to world series where you will get a stud player for getting to 900. Only the elite make it to the 900 level. That refreshes once every four weeks or so. It's always different. And every time they refresh that leaderboard, they add new legends that you can unlock. You can play competitively in Battle Royale. Those are three inning games. I'm gonna show you guys how it works. I'm just gonna click in here. And what you're actually gonna do is a draft. So as you can see here, I'm already in the middle of a draft, but it's gonna cost you 1500 stubs to enter in. It's a 25 round draft. You have a set amount of diamonds, set amount of golds. There's like a structure to how you're gonna build your squad. Build the best team you possibly can, and the more you win, again, the more stuff you will unlock. This is the main screen you're gonna see when you load up Battle Royale, and then you can just press start to enter, and bang, first round is always your best player, and that's who you're gonna build your team around. If you can get to 12 wins without losing twice, you'll get some really good stuff unlocked. And if you get to 12 wins without losing at all, you're gonna get some ridiculously expensive cards. Like I'm talking 99 Chipper Jones type cards, God Squad players. Events is another way to play competitively, but those change every couple weeks and so you never know what the format's gonna be. That's why it's called events. Sometimes it'll be six innings, sometimes three, sometimes it'll be on a higher difficulty, sometimes easier. Sometimes it'll be structured to where you'll have good hitters against bad pitchers. It's always different. So let's click into the event here and it's gonna show you all the rules on this this screen this event will run until february 16th that is one week from now you can only use finest tier cards award tier cards or monthly award cards bronze and common players can fill out the rest of your team if you don't have enough of any of those series to fill your squad your max team overall is a 99 it is on legend difficulty that is the highest difficulty three inning games you have one week to win how many games? If you win 25 games in that one week period, three inning games, you'll get a 99 Alex Bregman and it'll just unlock onto your account. He is sellable in the marketplace too. So if you unlock him fast, you can sell him for top dollar on the marketplace if you wanna get rid of him. Maybe you already have a third baseman and you don't wanna use Bregman. You can sell him for major coin. And then if you wanna keep playing the event after you get the feature player, they just feed you more packs for getting more wins. It's just so easy to get stuff in this game. As you can see there under the view rewards, it says cumulative wins. That's your total wins overall, regardless of losses. But your streak rewards at the bottom are where you can add extra gold and diamond rewards on top of the event rewards that you unlock. If you go 10 and two, three times, not only will you get Bregman because you passed 25 wins, 
you'll get three separate 90 to 95 overall live series diamonds because you won 10 games without losing twice three different times then you have your offline ways to play like moments where you can just hop into hot spots in certain games to unlock subs xp packs and players in diamond dynasty the all-timers for example if we hop in here you had to play a bunch of three inning games against the cpu and at the end of it i didn't even complete this but if you do you'll get a 99 babe ruth for doing all this kind of a grind that's why i didn't do it but if you're an offline type person babe ruth's one of the best hitters in the game so there's that you can do showdown mode which is actually a lot like battle royale except it's offline so what you're going to do is you're actually going to hop into a draft that draft is going to have a theme based off of either an inning program or a team affinity program or a certain league or a certain division. So let's click on AL Central, for example. We're gonna go into an AL Central showdown. Now, before we hit start draft, as you can see on the screen here, there's a bunch of mini missions that you can complete. Once you get to these big red squares, these are mini bosses. If you lose on these mini boss squares, you have to start over and your run officially ends and the objective is to get all the way to the end where you will beat the final boss and you can unlock a bunch of stuff as you can see on the screen vouchers that unlock diamonds xp and stubs and the draft just like br super simple you're just going to enter in you're going to have 10 rounds to build your team the rest of the squad will be auto generated but you're going to get some really good players to start out and then you just hop in your run you start banging out those missions and hopefully unlock some goons along the way anytime sds adds a new theme to showdown there's typically new diamond players equipped to that theme so playing through it usually will result in unlocking diamond players that you can then transfer over and use in modes like rank seasons so even when you're playing offline you're unlocking studs that you can then use online conquest is another offline mode it's kind of like a big board game and they drop different ones in the game all the time these ones are logo boards so this is supposed to be the indians logo here and really the whole goal is to just take over the whole map. I suggest looking up full conquest tutorials on YouTube. It's a very complex mini mode in the game. It's very fun once you understand what you're doing, but it can be extremely confusing to someone who's new. So if you want to get into conquest, it is a very good way to get packs. They give you so many packs for free, good packs in conquest. But if you want to learn more about it, I would look up conquest specific videos. Just know that it's an offline mode where again, you can unlock some ridiculously good stuff for your God squad. A really good way to level up your XP reward path as well, which is the meat and bones of this mode. And then of course the PlayStation tournaments, San Diego studios about a year and a half ago started doing actual tournaments. So you're going to be able to register and play in tournaments online through your PlayStation and there are cash prizes. You're going to have to play through qualifier rounds and all that jazz and thousands and thousands of people sign up to play in those. It's really competitive and a lot of fun. And they're just getting started with that. So now that the game's going to Xbox, you're going to see them expand on that. So expect to see more esports related stuff being added to Diamond Dynasty in the future. A couple cool things about Diamond Dynasty compared to other fantasy modes is you want to have a created player. So you can actually level up and customize a created player at each position on the field. You can only use your created player at one position at a time. So you can't load up on on creative players everywhere. You gotta pick one position at a time and that player cannot have secondary positions. They're set at that one spot or at least that's how it's been over the last four years. There's some serious speculation that things are gonna change with the creative player in Diamond Dynasty for MLB 21. So no, I'm not gonna go into detail on how you unlock your creative player because it will be different in 21. And then the other cool thing that you get is you can actually have team logos and uniforms. So you can edit uniforms and logos for your squad. I've shown these off before. If you've looked at any YouTuber's video on MLB The Show, you can't add or equip set uniforms. You have to build your custom uniforms for your team. Everyone uses custom unis. My roads are blacks. These are actually, I love these uniforms. Been rocking out with these for a few months now. So you can customize your uniforms and your logos. One thing to always note, if you're trying to keep up with Diamond Dynasty content, the schedule on the homepage, when you first load up MLB The Show, it's always the first thing right there on the screen, plow. There is a thing called the inning program in MLB The Show's Diamond Dynasty. Every couple weeks, the program goes up an inning. So when the game comes out, we will be looking at the first 
inning program. When you load up the game on day one, you will most likely see first inning where you see 11th inning on your screen right now. And then after four or five weeks, we will go on to the second inning. And then a month later, we'll go to the third. And the inning programs are what we use to go through the entire cycle of the game. Every month or so, we get a new inning that also has a ton of new players and new packs and new XP. It gives us a bunch of fresh stuff to do. And as you can see by the legends on the screen on that 11th inning patch, the inning program players through the 11 inning programs this year were absolutely gross 99 kershaw frank thomas griffey jr bryce harper mariano rivera chipper jones todd helton david ortiz larry walker hall of famers 99 god squad goon cards for free yeah, that's right, these inning programs, a lot of people actually get through these inning programs in a day or two. It's not that easy, you gotta be an all night grinder to get it done that fast. Most people, it'll take three or four days of casually playing it. But you get some really, really good players that are usable all year, that's awesome. Now moving on to other stuff. I'll show you guys what the build a squad lineup screen looks like. So this year they added something called the multi lineup. So as you see at the top of the screen right now, main, wheel, packs and grind those are my four different teams that i currently have in my inventory you can hold up to four different lineups on your squad so maybe if you wanted to do it to where you had a versus righties a versus lefties a lefties who are good at lefties righties who are good at righties whatever you can have four different lineups do it however you want i have it based off of the different series that i upload on youtube so this is my god squad tab i'm typically making my wager wheel videos on this tab typically doing my irl pack and plays over on this tab and then when I'm live on Twitch, just grinding stuff. And by grinding, I mean playing offline so that I can unlock stuff to make YouTube videos out of later. I'm usually building that squad through here. And all you have to do is hit L2 or R2 to switch over to your pitchers. When you wanna add a new player to your team, all you gotta do is go to the position that you're looking to change, hit the sub button, then it goes into your inventory. If you wanna hit square, you can filter it to look for specific guys in your inventory. Usually though, it's filtered from uh, highest to lowest. Usually you're looking for your better players, so they'll be right there towards the top on the first or second page. But the filter option is there if you need it. So one cool fun fact about Diamond Dynasty, I'm gonna go into my inventory. I'm gonna get hit player collection here. There is a different binder for players, equipment, stadiums, unlockables. You can even check your packs from here in the inventory screen. I'm gonna go into my player collection. So this is my binder essentially for diamond dynasty this is where all my cards are it'll tell me exactly how many of each card that i have you have the live series cards which are the current players on the active teams and then if you hit r2 it'll show you the flashbacks and legend cards for that particular team and this is where things get dicey you can see cool stuff like prospect cards adley rutschman had a 90 this came out early in the year Got nice flashbacks like the Zach Britton 93 Prime card. That thing is throwing shed. So you can go through and collect legends and current players of each team. And essentially you just want to put the best binder possible together. Now the cool thing is about Diamond Dynasty, the live series players are based off of the real life top series one. If you pull up the Bo Bichette series one card from the real life top set, that's the card. That's it. That's the design. MLB The Show has a contract with Tops where the live series players, the current actual active players, SDS uses their real life card as the graphic. Now, some of the more flashback stuff, like the finest card design, SDS made that design on their own. These Future Stars cards, SDS made that design on their own. You have the Silver Slugger MVP, the award winner type cards, SDS made that design on their own. And SDS design team does a really good job with how these cards look every year. But I think it's really cool that the real life baseball card is the design that they use on the live series cards in game. Cause I collect baseball cards in real life. If you're subscribing here new, you're gonna learn that. I open a lot of real life baseball cards. So it's really cool seeing those designs in the game. I just think that's cool, man, I don't know. Anytime you get packs and trust me, MLB The Show is gonna give you so many free packs. You wanna go all the way to the right to the shop, go down to open packs. This is where all your packs are gonna be. And as you can see here, I have so many packs. I mean, these are good packs. So I'm gonna open this pack, look at this. We got 90 plus diamond studs. This time of year, these cards aren't selling for much, but these cards flat out rake. These are just free packs that I've gotten for playing. 
I don't even know how I, I honestly don't even remember how I got this pack in particular. They just throw them at you for grinding, man. Even if you don't get anything, you can just sell the stuff inside and get your stubs up and then spend it on something else. Let's open up Team Affinity. I'm not going to go crazy in the detail about Team Affinity because it's most likely going to have some major adjustments in 21 and we can learn about that together when the new game comes out. Well, that just about covers it, guys. Diamond Dynasty is a very complex mode, but at the end of the day, all you're really doing is playing virtual baseball and unlocking a bunch of rewards along the way. If you're a competitive person, there's only going to be a handful of guys at every position throughout the year that you're looking to use. The best of the best. Someone like me, who's been collecting baseball cards my whole life, been playing video games my whole life, been playing baseball video games my whole life, I like to mix my lineup up and match different guys and play with different theme builds and use the different variety of cards that they put in the game regardless of their overalls and their stats. This game just throws so much stuff at you. It's so easy to unlock stuff in here and I can't wait for the new game to come out because they crush it with content and I think they're gonna go crazy now that this game's on Xbox and we got new gen consoles. The budget went up, they're in a new warehouse. Their streams are gonna be lit at San Diego Studios. I'm so hyped for 21. It's going to be a blast. If you guys enjoyed this video, or if you learned anything, hit that thumbs up down below. And if you're not new here, or if you play MLB The Show regularly, I'm sorry that you just sat through this 15 to 20 minute video of me telling you everything you already know. But since you stuck it out, I want you to know I appreciate you, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.